Well, the whole thing basically starts right here. Um, this is our uh, hot liquor tank. And liquor in brewing terms or in distilling terms just means water. So we heat up the water in here overnight. Um, come in in the morning, hopefully it's at the right temp. Usually it's not, we have to adjust it. But uh, once we find the right temperature, a little bit of a mess right now because we're not brewing today, but we'll bring the, the water over into this vessel. This is the mash tun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where we mix in the grain. Very labor. So we actually have the biggest kitchen whisk you've ever seen in your life. And we mix <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so it's pretty much one guy stirring and a couple guys dumping bags of grain at the same time. Yeah. And uh, we get the grain in there. We let it steep for about an hour, kind of like tea. And what that does is there's starches and enzymes that are inside the seed yeah. that are there to uh, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, feed the plant. So basically, we're tri tricking it into thinking that it's springtime. Right? Right. So those starches and enzymes convert over to sugars like they would with rainwater, essentially, when the rainwater gets in there, the heat from the sun. Yeah. Uh, they convert over to sugars, but obviously there's no plant in there. So that's what we're after. Uh, yeah. the sugars go into solution in the liquid. Um, and then we uh, start to extract that liquid out. We actually pump it out of the bottom of here yeah. into the kettle. Wash it down to try and extract as much of that liquid as possible. Um, collect it all in the kettle. Uh, in here, we boil it. Yeah. Uh, and we also add our hops three times to counteract the sweetness of the malt. Um, we boil for about 90 minutes, uh, which does two things. One, it concentrates the liquid a little bit more, and two, it, uh, it sterilizes it. Because any wild yeast or bacteria which occurs around us all the time um, want to have a crack at that sugar. So we want our yeast to have the first crack at it. So yeah. it helps you know, we sterilize it down. Um, then we cool it down real quickly using this new contraption over here. That's our heat exchanger. And uh, we run cold water through one side. We run the hot beer through the other side of work, as it's called. It's not fermented yet, so it's yeah. called work. Uh, through the other side, and they, they pass close to each other in between those fins in there, those plates. Yeah. And uh, they give up their heat or their cold to one another. Um, so what we wind up with is cold work going into the fermenters and hot water coming out. And we collect the hot water again back in the hot liquor tank oh, okay. to use for the next brew. So we're not yeah, just dumping right. it down the drain, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so from there we go into the fermentation room, which is over this way. And uh, this is kind of where the difference between ales and lagers starts. This is a full batch. You kind of smell some CO2 blowing off right now. Yeah. It's uh, we're basically 10 to 14 days inside the cellar. Um, it's a much longer process than brewing ales, partly because of the temperature. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit more of a sluggish process than an ale yeast would be. But um, we put the yeast in, and the yeast eats all the sugar and creates alcohol and CO2. And uh, we monitor how much sugar the yeast has eaten tells us how much alcohol has been produced. And once we get to a certain point, we'll actually stop it by transferring it over into the lager cellar. The next, uh, next stop on the tour. Back here, you'll see it's, it's much, much colder back here, yeah. um, and that's part of the lottering process. Um, in the old days, this would have been an ice cave, you know, like where the ice never came out all year round, and they would store the beer back there and uh, just let it mature. And so we're back here. It's basically one of these times a week out the door is what we're trying to do. Um, so it's about a five-week lottering process where it just sits back here, it matures, it's allowed to mellow out, and uh, just takes a nap. Um, and then once that once that five weeks is up, and we come back out a year, we go into uh, one of these copper tanks behind it. And these are our conditioning tanks. Uh, so in here, we force carbonate our beer because uh, um, if we tried to bottle condition, it would add another two weeks on the whole process. Um, so we force carbonate our beer. We actually on the other end of this valve is a stone, kind of like you would see in, a, in an aquarium. Right. Um, 
creates a nice fine mist of CO2, makes it easier to go into solution in the liquid. Hold it under pressure, and it's essentially like making seltzer water at that point. You just you hold it under pressure, and the CO2 goes into solution, and that's where we get our bubbles. Um, and then from there, it's uh, the bottom machine set up here. You can walk it out that. Quite labor intensive. Uh, we use four bottles at a time that we can fill. They get capped one at a time. Um, and uh, put them into the bottle and into a box and out the door. That's the goal. So it's uh, it's a small brewery, but we're getting it done and uh, yeah. making good beer, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah, was, I know. Yeah. Thanks. This is Tom Bull from Bull Jagger Brewing Company, and you're watching Active Beer Geek.